What is up producers? Ableton Live 12 just dropped today. Everybody is super stoked and there are some dope new features within it. A lot of these we've already heard about. If you've been following the hype at all with 12 beta, we have a similarity feature, which is super dope. Uh, we have Roar, we have Meld. There's some other new view features in there. However, since I've been playing with beta the last couple months, I have found some super dope kind of hidden features that I'd like to share with you today. I'm gonna go over about five or six of my new favorite settings that I just love and I use all the time. By the way, for those of you who are new here, my name is Bo, my artist name is Bohemoth. I'm a music producer and educator. I work out here in Manhattan at the school 343 Labs. If there's anywhere you guys are stuck in your musical journey as far as Ableton or, or music production in general goes, drop your questions in the comment. I'd be happy to answer them for you. If there's a topic you want a video made on, you can drop that in the comments as well and I'd be happy to assist you and, and try to get you to where you're going. Toss me a like and subscribe, it really helps. Let's get into it. So the first one I'm gonna mention is, a lot of us are familiar already with the similarity feature. It's kind of one of the most talked about things about Live 12, and if you're not familiar, basically what it is, is this little icon right here. So if you're looking at a sound and you click on it, yeah. and you like the sound, but you wanna use something kind of slightly different, we'll click on this, and it's actually gonna show us sounds similar to it. Yeah, 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 what? Yeah, bitch? It's pretty accurate, it works pretty good. So that's really cool, that's been talked about pretty heavily, but what hasn't been talked about is this. Uh, and that's actually that we can utilize the same feature, but on a drum rack. So if we're playing the drums here and we got a kick and we like the kick, but it could be a little bit different. All we have to do is press command right. So we can right click and go to next similar or just press command right. And it's gonna switch it to the next closest kick sample in your library. And then we can hit command back to return to the previous kicks. We can actually also do this with the entire drum rack. So we can, again, we can click on the head of the entire drum rack Right click, swap all pads to next, or just command right. And it's gonna give us essentially a brand new drum rack with similar sounding pads. We can actually also accomplish this on Simpler. So if I open up a Simpler here and uh, we're playing in something, we can either right click in here and select next Simpler, or we can just click in here, command right. And it's gonna give us the next Simpler sample. So that's tight. The next thing they put in here that's kind of a hidden workaround is the Momentary automation and pencil tool. So basically how this works is, so historically if we wanted to enter automation mode, we would have to click A and then we have our lanes open here and we can make our adjustments, which is great. But now we can actually do that momentarily by holding A. So if I'm outside of automation mode and I wanna come in here and make a quick automation, I'm holding down A right now. And I can click this and then when I let go, we're back out of automation. So that's a pretty cool little workaround. That actually also applies to the pencil. So if we're working here in MIDI and we wanna temporarily click a couple notes in, again, we can press B hold it down, make our marks, and then let go, and the pencil's gone. This also works for zoom, which is super handy, so if we wanna kind of zoom in real quick and take a look at something, hold down Z, we can take a look at it, let go, we're back out of zoom. This next one is probably my favorite, I think it's probably gonna be everybody's favorite, and that's the freeze and flatten option. So historically we would come in here and we would have freeze track, and then we'd have to circle back and flatten, but since God knows all of us are freezing and flattening so consistently, they actually put it here as an option that does both at once. But we can actually take this a step further and do something kind of crazy. So what we can do is if we're on Mac here, we can open up our system preferences, go to keyboard, click keyboard shortcuts, and then we're gonna click app shortcuts. We're gonna select live 12. This says live 11 for some reason right now. And then we're going to add one and we're gonna type in freeze and flatten, exactly how it's spelled with caps on the right spots and everything. So uppercase F, freeze, lowercase and, uppercase F for the flatten. And then we can set this to whatever we want. I set mine to shift command F, freeze and flatten. I already have one, so I'm gonna cancel out of this. And then we just click done. And then this is actually now set as a quick command. So if we just press shift command F, Frozen Flatten, super, super dope. I'm amped on this. This is definitely one of my new favorite features. This one's gonna be less commonly used, but it is here. We'll notice anywhere we right click, we have the option to copy Max for Live Path. Uh, this is a setting that's new in Ableton Live 12, and this is really only gonna apply to our Max for Live people, but it's cool that if we wanna come in here and copy a path anywhere, we have the option to do that right away by right clicking. The next thing I'm gonna touch on is some of the controls that kind of changed around. You'll notice up here, we have these orange kind of blocks, and this is going to collapse the browser menu. So historically we had shift command B and L. So we had browser lower, shift command G was groove pool. So we had these quick keys to kind of move everything around. Now, since we have these buttons down here so we can access our uh, mixer panel, access our, our processing and all that from down here, they also gave us an option up here to collapse the browser menu. It also is worth noting that they actually changed the quick commands for the different menus for showing them and toggling to them. So historically it was like shift command, B would be browser, L would be lower, uh, G would be groove pool and so forth. Now it's options. So if we wanna to toggle around with these, it's option one through six. So they're all assigned a different uh, section. 
Option three is lower. Op option four is your audio effects. Option five is browser. Option six is your group pool. Option command is going to open and close them. So it's the same keys except with option, you're gonna open or close. So option command four is lower. Option command three is audio effects. Option command five is browser. I couldn't figure out how to close the lower menu for a second. So it's, it's kind of good to know. And this one's been talked about quite a bit, but this is a pretty cool feature I'm excited about. And that's the browser search history. These little arrows up here, these left and this right, what these do is these actually let you go back to your previous searches for samples. So if we click this, we can go back and see whichever samples we were looking at before. Um, super dope for if you kind of get lost and you're looking for a folder or a sample you were on before. So as a lot of us are already aware of, there are some new devices, one of which being Roar, which is a multi-band and parallel distortion and saturation unit, which is Fire, by the way. I've been playing with this one a lot. Like a lot of the previous Ableton devices, there's additional options when we right-click it. This one does have that high-quality setting. So a number of the different older Ableton Live 11 devices had this, and now we have it on the Roar device. So if we want a little bit better quality, we can click this. Also, while we're on a device, they actually changed the tab button to toggle between controls. So if I hit tab here, we can now scroll between these different knobs and we can actually adjust these with the arrows up, down, left, right. So now we can come in here and adjust these on, off, up, down, which is pretty cool. And while we're talking about knobs, this is a pretty dope feature. If we're automating something, like say we have an LFO here and it's on the frequency and this is going up and down, historically this would have just been grayed out and we couldn't touch it because it's being modulated by the LFO. Now we actually have the control of coming in here and adjusting it, even though it's being controlled. So we can kind of like control the range and, and still adjust this, even though it's locked to something. So that's pretty dope. Uh, one cool little workaround when working with audio clips is if we're working with the gain and we're kind of trying to match it to something or get it right, if we just hit backspace, it's gonna return it to zero. Cool little quick command there. Moving into some MIDI stuff. So there's like a ton of stuff they did with the MIDI. We have all these new settings over here, which are Super dope, there's like tons of options we can do with these, but one that's kind of a quick, cool command is if we hold Command E and we drag along our MIDI, it's actually gonna separate them based on the grid we're working on. So if I make this like a really fine grid, if we hold Command E, it's gonna cut these all to the grid, whatever grid we're working on. While we're working on MIDI, we can also actually group MIDI clips now, which is pretty cool. So it's just like we would group tracks, Command A, Command G, and we know they're grouped because if we look closely here, we have this little uh, black arrow on all of them. That's how we know they're grouped. And you might be asking, why would we want to group MIDI? And that's because we have these settings down here for chance and randomization. And now we can actually affect all these MIDI clips together and we can actually adjust the randomization and the chance on them. So like, say we want chance to select one of these MIDI clips to play every time this goes around. If we select and group all these, it's gonna select one from the group and play that. And then probably a different one or, or whatever, whatever random algorithm it uses. So we can play all or play one, or ungroup. So that's a cool little setting they kind of tossed in there. The last setting I'm gonna note is in regards to our browser menu over here, um, we have all this stuff, and if you're like me, you probably don't use a lot of it. I don't use like Ableton stock drums, I don't really use Ableton stock sounds. So what we can actually do now is we can come up here to collections, and if we hover over it, it's gonna give us this little edit selection. If we press that, we can actually uncheck some of these we don't wanna see. So if we don't wanna see the drums or instruments or sounds, uh, we can do that, that way they're not in our way. We have a little bit more room for the stuff we are looking for. So those are some of my favorite little Easter eggs I've come across with working with the beta version the last couple months. I hope this was helpful for you guys. If you have any other questions about Live 12 or if there's something new you wanna see, just drop it in the comments and I'll try to get to it. Thank you guys for watching and I'll see you next time. Awesome.